I'm going to do a very quick test here to see if I can program a surround sound effect very quickly. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to record my voice indicating which channel I'm recording for a surround sound mix. But before I do that, let me come up to my edit control panel and let's look at the audio settings very quickly. Hey, look at that. There's my voice bouncing the meter up and down. Quite amazing. The thing I want to look at here is for the voiceover and there's the mix automation right above it. Both of these pertain to our audio editing tool. However, voiceover is what I'm looking for. I have a pre-roll of five seconds and a post-roll of one second. That's just fine. I'm using my Sound Blaster Antique Audio Card, which I'm sure many of you are doing the same thing. And we're capturing at 48K, 16-bit stereo. So that's pretty much what I'm looking for here. I could close that audio meter down by using the Extend Dialog button. This is based on the settings of my sound card. If I come down to the bottom right of my Windows toolbar and double click, there is my play control for my Sound Blaster card, and right now I'm coming in through the line in. So I checked that and you couldn't hear what I was saying because it was checked mute. So this is determining what is going down the pipe into Liquid Edition. So let's go ahead and say OK. OK. I've got a mark in and a mark out on my timeline. I've got this particular track marked, LF for left front. There it is on my mixer and I've adjusted my mixer. I've got that one particular channel turned on. So now if I hit the voiceover button, it's going to pre-roll and start recording at the mark in. Left front channel. Left front channel. Left front channel. Left front channel. Now it comes up and says, do you want to keep that? I'll give this a clip name of LF for left front. Imagine that. Say OK. Splits the audio. Hmm. Captured it as a stereo file. You can see if I expand that track, there's two tracks. There's my voice over there and as well here. Why did it do that? Why did it record two channels or stereo? Well, because down here on our new mixer, bottom row, the track input type was set to stereo. So let's try setting that to mono. I'll right click on this clip. I will delete it. It's gone. And let's try that one more time. Three, two, one. Left front channel. Left front channel. Left front channel. All right, there we go. And now it's auto incrementing for me. How about that? So let me just get rid of that. Say OK. Still did the same thing. So there it is. It recorded in stereo. Why did it record in stereo? Because I had the input for this particular track, the track input type selected to mono. So it should record it in mono, right? Not necessarily. Let's go back up to the edit control panel, audio settings. And there is the culprit right there, 48K 16-bit stereo. I said that myself and I didn't even listen to myself. Imagine that. If I'm not listening to myself, why should I expect you guys to be listening? So I click on that window. It expands a list of choices, of which there are numerous types. And what I'm going to do is change this to 48K 16-bit mono. And let's give that a try. So right-click, delete. And one more time, shall we? And you know what? I'm going to shorten this so we don't have to listen to me talking left, right channel over and over and over. All right. Voice over. Go. Three, two, one. Left front channel. Left front channel. LF1. Let's get rid of that auto increment again. Say OK. Hey, look at that. It's amazing what happens when you push the right buttons. And there it is. There's my left front channel. <clears throat> left front channel. All right, that's great. Continuing along here, the next track down, I've marked RF for right front. You can see it echoed up here in the mixer. I've turned on the audio recording. So let's go ahead and hit the button and go. Three, two, one. Right left front, front channel. channel. Oh. Left front channel. Who's that guy talking? Well, it's going to be recorded because it's all going through the same pipe. So let me cancel out of that. Turn off the left front channel audio. 
and we'll try it again. Notice up here in our audio mixer that the left front bus has disappeared, and that's because I, I turned that track off. When I turn it back on, there's the left front bus again. Let's turn it off for now. And before I hit the go button here, I'm going to change that pre-roll in my control panel. Instead of five seconds, I'm just going to give it two seconds, because that's all I need. I'm just doing some basic stuff here. All right, so there we go. Ready, set, go. Two, one. Right front channel. Right front channel. Right front channel. Hits the end of the timeline and pops up with the voiceover. Do you want to insert the recorded clip into the timeline? Well, yes, I do. And I'm going to call this one RF. Not for radio frequency, but for right front channel. And there it is. Let's turn them on and play through. Right left front, front channel. channel. Right left front, front channel. channel. Right front channel. Uh huh. Here we are looking at a little bit of a different view on my timeline. I just made these individual tracks a little less tall so I can see the ones below. And I wanted to show you an option to turning off these tracks, which also makes them disappear from our mixer. Instead of turning those tracks off, I'm just going to come up here to the top of the mixer and mute those tracks. And now we won't be listening to them. And now I can move over to name three. Let me right click here. I will rename it and I'll call this center. Enter. Center, enter. How about that? And now I will go ahead and record the center channel voiceover. Center channel. Center channel. This is the center channel. I will name this C E N T E R, or if you're from Europe, the Centre channel. Thank you very much. All right, so the next track I'm going to work on is the left rear or the surround left. So I will rename this S L for surround left. Hit enter. There it is, the SL. So let me turn off the center track because we already recorded that. I shall now turn on the surround left track. I will also mute the center track so I don't record that as I'm recording my voice and I'll hit the go button. Surround left. Surround left. Rear left speaker. There it is. Okay, so SL. And then one more time, we'll just move right along. I will scroll down here to my last audio track, right click, rename, S, R, enter. Okay, we'll mute the surround sound left. We'll turn on the surround sound right. We'll hit the go button. Right rear speaker, surround right. Look to your right. All right, sorry if I get too creative, you know, but hey. What can I do? So surround, right, enter. And why can't we see the waveforms? Well, again, because I haven't turned those on, those particular tracks. Right click, waveform, right click, waveform, just like that. And now I'm gonna exit out of our audio editor very quickly. I'm gonna change my display to the quarter inlay sizes to give myself a little bit more room here on our very crowded timeline track. And now I'm just gonna grab these guys and split them off so that they're not talking over each other. And that way we'll get a much better sampling of if I have actually done this correctly. Okay, so there we go. Let me close this guy down. We don't need him right now. That was my project browser, by the way. And you know what I'm gonna do very quickly is I'm gonna create some title deco graphics just to give myself a clue of what we're listening to in a visual sense. So I will click here on my CG titler. I will just type LF for left front. Triple click to highlight it. Drag it down to the right to make it bigger. There we go. Isn't that lovely? You know what? That's kind of boring. Let's, uh, let's apply some nifty little style to it. Okay, that's lovely. So now one of the new things, if we haven't already talked about this, is the F11, F12 functionality are gone, although I think they might still work if I hit F12. It saves. F11. Yep, still works. And let's go to our rack to retrieve those graphics. Where are they, pray tell? There it is in the video. So click, drag, drop, LF. Scale it back. 
Is Title Deco still open? Nope, it's not down there on my taskbar. So let me click on CG again to open up Title Deco. Now, what, what is that LF we're looking at right now? Well, if I go back to Liquid Edition, it's because my playline is parked on the LF. So now I park it there. Let's go back to Title Deco. Let's create a new graphic. No. All right, let's close out of there. I park my playline here, and now I go back into Title Deco. And there's a nice clean background. All right, so now I want to do the right front, so RF. You know what? Triple click, or double click in this case. And we'll give it some fancy schmancy looks. Because, you know, why be normal? Why be boring? That's my motto. Okay. So now instead of hitting the F12, F11, what we do is we go up to File. We hit Save as New to Liquid. There we go. It's saved. We come back down to Pinnacle Liquid. In the particular rack we had open, and there it is. Click, drag, drop. Trim it down to fit. And there's the right front speaker. Why can't I see it? Because that is an audio track. Let me turn on the video. You know what? Let's not do that. Let's put that track up here on the video track. And that, and that way I don't have to turn on video and audio on both tracks. Left front, right front, center, or centre. So, double click. And now I will type in centre. Double click on that. Go to the size. And we'll just type in 122. Enter. Okay, there we go. Centre for all my European friends out there. And again, I will hit save. And let's see what happened. Did that write over the file that I already had in there? Nope. That looks okay. So where is it? I don't see it. So I think it may have. It did. You can see it's still there. But you know what? Let's do this. Let's go up to the Save as New to Liquid, which is different from the Save to Liquid, or the Save. So Control-E will save this as a new graphic to Liquid, whereas just hitting Save will write over the file that we already have open. So let's save this as new. All right, there we go. And now there's my center down there. If we look here in the rack, here's the one I just created and dropped on there, and there it is. It says center, and then here's the other one. It's still listing itself as RF, but the next time I open up this project, it would show me center because 66, which is this clip right here, is has now been changed to center. So let me right-click on that clip, open Entitled Deco, and that was, if I'm not mistaken, double-click, Let's choose a font, and we'll call this, this was right front, wasn't it? So RF, double-click, stretch her out. Now, do we need to save this as new to Liquid? Not really, because we just corrected what we had made a mistake on. So I'll just save this, and now, there it is. 66 has been changed to the lovely RF. All right, so surround left, so CG. Oop, did I just close title deco? I did. You see, it was already open. I should have known it was already open because gold, any buttons that are gold on the toolbar indicate they are on or active. All right, so now I shall relaunch Title Deco RT. And let's see, we were doing surround left, right? So S, L, double click. And then some of my favorite pre-built fonts are down below here. This is one of my favorites. Looks like Saturday Night Live, doesn't it? It's too bad it's not Saturday Night. I want to do the file, save as new to liquid, which is control E, which would be a whole lot faster than clicking all over the place all the time. So we'll go ahead and click here now since we're here. Control E. There it is in my list. Click, drag, drop, trim. I'm trimming my graphics every time, but if I wanted to, I could set the default still image import duration in my control panel to match the length of these audio clips, and I wouldn't have to trim this each time. But anyway. Doesn't matter, we're almost done, so let's go ahead and sally forth and continue, shall we? So I won't click on the CG button because it's gold, indicating that Title Deco is already open. What I could do is hold down my alternate key on my keyboard and then hit Tab. Hey, and look at that. And this is one of the neat little features of Windows, is alternate tab will cycle through all the different applications you have open at the current time. So now if I let go of alternate, I am instantly back in Title Deco. Without opening up a new graphic, I will just type in surround right. 
We'll double click to highlight it and we'll give it a new look. One of my ultimate favorites is the neon look. Hey, look at that. And unfortunately it resizes it, but let's go ahead and resize it real quick. And now instead of saving this, I will save this as new, which is control E. And now I go back to liquid either by mousing down here or let's use our new friend, the alternate tab. Hey, look at that. I scroll down here now, click, drag, drop, trim, and away we go. Let's go back to the beginning of our timeline and we'll play through that just to see what we've got. Left, front, channel. Left, front, channel. Right, front, channel. Okay, we get the general idea. Right, front, channel. Center, channel. Center, channel. Surround, left. Right, rear, speaker. Surround, right. Look to your right. Okay, so there we go. So now, let's go ahead and close down that CG titler because we don't need all those things running in the background. Now I will switch my display back to the symmetric inlay sizes without the left or right toolbars, which gives me more room for when I open up my audio editor. All right, so there we go. So you know what, while we're here, I'll just change all these to mono, just so we're all on the same page, because these are all mono tracks on my timeline, correct? We'll turn them all back on. Interesting, we were able to hear them. So now we shall go up to our top left of our audio mixer, and I'm going to mouse over these pluses till I get the function I want, which is the logical output bus. I click on it. It opens up the logical output bus track. So I shall select by clicking and change to surround sound 5.1. And notice there's two of these logical output buses, and that's because I clicked on add a new logical output bus. But let's go to surround sound 5.1. And we will do this for each one of these guys. So now they're all surround sound, but how do I mix them? Well, we need to go to the track output panning, and there it is. Click. And hey, look at that. There's my surround sound mixers for each individual channel. So now I shall go to the left front, and I probably need to pan that to the left front. Kind of like that. All the way left front. Right front, all the way to the right front. Center is in the center already. Surround left to the back, surround right to the back. And what about, now wait a minute, let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Now excuse me, but isn't surround sound 5.1 as it says down here? Why yes it is 5.1, and if I mouse over this little line right here, low frequency enhancement. All right, so that's my point one, or the ultra low bases that make everything rumble through the subwoofer. But there's something we need to take a look at here down on our track. All of a sudden now there's uh, some lines showing up, some but not all. Let me right click on each track. Let me right click on each track. And I want to show track output panning, because that's what we're concerned with right now. So I need to make sure that that's active. So instead of doing that for each individual track, I'm going to right click up here and show track output panning for each track, and now it's turned on. So again, let's close down our project browser so we get more of the timeline. And notice, there's our surround sound lines, the red and the green, but they're kind of going all over the place, and they're not where they need to be. Because if we mouse over here, this is track output panning. So I'm basically setting keyframes determined on where I am sitting on the timeline. So if we rewind to the beginning of our timeline, take a look at the surround sound panning attributes now. They're not anywhere where I had placed them. This is keyframe specific, so let me go ahead and set everything up again. So left front, right front, center is just fine. Surround left to the back, surround right to the back right. And so now you can see those lines are diverging all over the place. So what I really should have done was done this at the very beginning of my timeline. So again, this is track specific. I really should have done this at the very beginning of my timeline. So let me go all the way to the beginning of my timeline and we'll try this one more time. So left front, right front, center's already there. Surround left, bottom left, surround right, bottom right. Okay, and now the lines are going straight across, at least for the most part. So yes, indeed, they are working. So let's go ahead and play through this. But before I do, I'm gonna change my faders, my clip faders by right-clicking.
my clip faders by right clicking and expanding them out to the full on regular faders that we're so used to. And I'm also going to come over here. Take a look at this far right bus. Notice it's the surround sound 5.1 bus. Perhaps you also noticed that the audio meter area is a little bit wider than the surrounding audio meter. So let's go ahead and play and see what we get. Left front channel. Ah. Left front channel. Look at that. Right front channel. Right. So there's that front particular front channel. channel. Right front channel. Center channel. So I get center two meters channel. per. This is the center channel. And notice the center channel is a little louder. Surround left. Surround left. So I'm getting two Rear audio left. meters per track. One right. being the actual Rear track and one being the subwoofer right. or the bass. Look to your right. Or the low frequency. So there you go. I think we've got it. All right, so there we go. I think we're pretty much ready to give this a whirl and try and get this out to disk. Let's just take a look at the output mapping very quickly. Hmm, what's the classic doing there? Somebody must have turned on the classic routing. So let's go to settings, turn off classic output routing. And now we go back. This is basically what we're looking for. The fuse export routing is going to go out as a surround sound mix as denoted by the stair stepping center channel going out to the center channel. The low frequency is going out to the low frequency, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and jump out of here, and we'll just do a very quick DVD setup and try and get this to work. All right, so now I'm going to change my quality of my inlay to get the toolbars on the sides. I will rewind to the beginning of my timeline. Let's go up to the video tracks. Jump into DVD menu wizard. We'll just do something very basic here like that one. Go to Film Style, right-click on the name, Activate All. Go ahead and put that baby in. There it is, and now it's offering to auto-link for me. I'm just going to skip this and do it myself. And we'll just grab the Strategy Session, Chapter Number 1, click, drag, drop. There's Chapter 1 right there. You know what? I think what I'll do is I'll make this an anchored target, which buries the chapter marker in the video track as well as on the DVD track. And at the very end, we shall move our play line right here, set a return to menu, and then that's pretty much it. So we'll go ahead and say OK, go to File, Export, DVD. All right, Image 2 apparently is what I used last time I was here, and that's always worked pretty well for me. There's all the settings that we can adjust, basically an average bit rate of 6 megabits per second. A maximum of 8 with a GOP group of pictures size of 15. And we'll just leave it as is. And by the way, there's a quality speed, which is best. And that's fine. Destination, that's what we're concerned about. We're going to a 4.37 gigabyte disk. That's great. But audio, uncompressed, I don't think so. Let's give Dolby Digital 5.1 a try since that's what we program for. Now we're going to go over to the burning tab. There's my burner. It's set to 2x, but let's go to 2.4x, which is the maximum allowable by the rewritable disk that's in there. I'm going to call this 5.1. So this allows me to label the disk whatever I want it to. So when it pops up in a computer environment, it actually has a volume name. Quick erase because it is an erasable disk, and we'll say go ahead. It's running through, it's processing, there's the menu. Everything looks good so far. Oh dear. Encoding of current sequence failed. Then there's a bunch of numbers here that may or may not mean something. What I'm looking at is 229, and I know that that menu is three seconds long, and there's the timecode value for it. So I'm guessing that it's saying it bailed on the last frame of the DVD menu for some reason, and there's the path it was going to. DVD new sequence, temp new sequence, one. You know what, let's get out of here. We'll, let's give this sequence a name. So I'll go back to my project browser, sequences, right click, go to rename. And again, we'll call this 5.1 because we are so creative. All right, there we go. Now let's give that one more try. Destination, oh, let's change that to 5.1. 
burning. You know what, we'll go with the slower speed this time and see if that gives us any less trouble. Again, we'll change the volume label to 5.1. Quick erase, ready, set, go. Now I'm not going to move my mouse or anything. I'm not going to touch anything. I'm barely going to breathe just enough to keep talking to you. Hey, oh, ah, darn it. Same thing. All right, so at this point, I think I might reboot the system, and we'll give it a whirl after we reboot the system. All right, so here we are back in Liquid Edition, version 6. Let's give it one more try. Export, DVD. DVD image 2, it's searching for the burner. We're using a whopping less than 1% of the disk capacity. Not too surprising. 29 megabytes, 0 0.03 Gigabytes. All right, so digital 5.1 burning. Slowest speed possible. 5.1. Now, come to think of it, I don't think the burning speed was the issue because it didn't even get past the compression stage before it bailed on us. So we'll give this one more try, and then we'll try a different codec. Don't breathe. Okay, so there we go. All right, so the next thing I'm going to try is a different codec or export option. So export to DVD. And instead of image 2, let's give VOB2 a try. Now, what's the differences? Statistical bit rate, average of 6, maximum of 8. Whereas if we went to, let's get out of here, and let's take a look at VOB1, video objects 1. Let's try a constant bitrate and see if that works any better for us. So check that. Destination. Uh -huh. Okay, a couple options there with the audio. Still can do the uncompressed, but it wants to go to MPEG Layer 2, which will only work on computers in North America. It won't work on set-top boxes. So word of warning there. Digital 5.1 burning. 5, 1. Aren't you glad I'm recording all this error messages and stuff for you so you can suffer with me? Oh, sh ah, Same thing. Now I shorten the menu there and it's bailing again on the last frame of the menu. Export to DVD. So maximum GOP size for DVD export is 18 in NTSC, which is what I'm in. Recommended for a DVD, PAL 12, NTSC 15, and that's what it is set to right now. So I'll go ahead and say OK. Current sequence or timeline is what we want. Destination, again, we want Dolby surround sound. Burning, and we'll call this 5.1. Now let's go to options. Let's do a still picture menu, and we'll go ahead and say OK. I'm almost tempted not to say anything or breathe or anything. But things seem to be going relatively well for our hero. Now, if this were moving video, you would be seeing the video moving at an almost a slowed version of play, perhaps 50 to 75%. So once it's exported the sequence, then it is going to go and start compiling. Or maybe not. I knew I shouldn't have been saying anything. Export sequence failed at timecode position 3705. Do you want to create an export file up to this point? You know what? Why not? And now, will it continue by compiling and burning for us? Left front channel. So based on the fact that we get to see each individual surround sound channel as well as the low frequency channel, I think we have programmed this properly. Center channel. And the next step would be getting this out of our system and disseminated to the huddled masses waiting to see our dazzling content. And the options we have here, if we exit our audio editor, we can take a look at file, export, sequence, and now we could do maybe an AVI, and maybe we'll make that full screen, like a DV window, 
And then in the audio options, we have the option to send it out as PCM 16-bit 48K matrix sound. And that will basically embed that surround sound mix into a pseudo surround sound two-channel mix down. And the other way to get our massive surround sound mix out of here is to close that down. Go back to File, Export, DVD. And then we've got the options here to choose different reference sets. We'll just go with DVD image two, which is a variable bit rate. And the thing we need to look at is the destination tab. And what we're looking for is we could do a matrix surround option, which is, as it says, a two channel surround down mix. Or we could do the Dolby digital 5.1.